Hi, Jacko. Hi. Hi. Um, well, it's been one year uh, since uh, since the release of your album, Cabinet of uh, Curiosities. Um, what were your expectations when you released the album? Uh, I don't think I really had any expectations. Uh, it's like uh, if someone tells, if I tell someone that I didn't expect it to be successful, then um, you would expect me to not really believe in it or to actually believe that it won't be successful because you don't expect it to be successful. But I just didn't expect anything. I just uh, made it and I, th I knew it was good for people who liked that kind of music, but I didn't know it was good uh, for all the other people. How, how did you know yourself it was good? Um, because I didn't, because I make the music that I would, that I want to hear and uh, I didn't hear anything like that anymore uh, right now, you know, in, in these times and only from the 60s. So, um, yeah, for me it was, it was great to make something like this so I can actually listen to this kind of music, like something new that sounded like that. So, uh, for me that was good. If you, well... Go into the album. You have two, twelve songs. Um, over what time frame were the songs written? Um, I think well, the first song was written when I was about seventeen years old, and um, I think uh, yeah, I think so. It's probably about eight years, something like that. What, what was the last song? The last one. Yeah. Um, that might be The Riddle, or maybe Cabinet of Curiosities, the title song. I'm not sure, actually. And what was the first song? Where Will You Go? If you compare those two songs, what, 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 what do you hear? It's been eight years between them? Um, well, uh, The Riddle is, is very similar to the band that I was in before, my, uh, before the solo project, but the songs like Where Will You Go is way before the that band as well, so um, it's a little similar to the to the more recent project I was doing and Cabin of Curiosities is more similar to something I got more and more into uh, during when I was making the album. I think that was the most recent one, Cabin of Curiosities. Um, because that, that song has a lot of like a soundtrack kind of feel, like uh, Italian or a movie or whatever, like 70s soundtrack sort of feel. And I really, I'm really into that kind of music lately, but I wasn't like, four years ago, I wasn't into that at all, because it was instrumental and too boring for me, I guess. But the album is also called C Cabinet of Curiosities. Well, if it's the last song that you wrote, then you must have had uh, some sort of working title for the album before that, or? Um. Not really, I, I didn't have any title, I was just looking at the titles of the songs so I could just pick one. I, I was always like, I'm just going to pick one of the songs as a title for the album, it's probably the easiest to do. But Clear the Air didn't really sound like an, uh, an album title to me. I think Cabinet of Curiosities visually looks better, you know, because it's yeah. like Cabinet of Curiosities. It's, it's a nice word that kind of caught my attention when I heard it and I read about it. Yeah. Your, um well, Clear the Air is... is um, why not name the album Clear, Clear the Air? Um, or is it too... It didn't feel right. It's okay. not... Because Cabinet of Curiosities is also uh, about all these songs that I wrote about such over such a long pre period that are about experiences in my life. And they've all become like bizarre stories based on, like loosely based on things that I experienced. And those things collected together on the album is sort of like a cabinet of curiosities because there's bizarre objects uh, collected in the cabinet as well. And the, in the song Cabinet of Curiosities was about actually... Uh, uh, in, I had a very visual idea with that, of like a little girl who collected uh, objects and creatures, even live creatures and things, in her own cabinet that she... Um, found on her uh, on her adventures in her imagination, so that would be similar to the songs that I wrote over my lifetime in my sort of adventures. Um, so in a way, that that all fit together really well, and much more than Clear the Air. It didn't feel like an album. Yeah. Um, Chameleon is one. Well, 
You said you write the songs loosely based upon things that happened in your life. Yeah. Chameleon, what, what triggered that song, the story? Um, well, that's just me looking for my own identity and feeling that I'm changing all the time into someone else and that I'm not sure uh, when, I, when I'm able to, to be like, this is me and like to step forward or like speak out like or, or dress or act like the person that you are instead of the one that you want to be. Sometimes you don't feel if you're the person that you, that you are or if you, if you really want to be a person and you mostly feel like I want to be that person. You kind of lose grip on who you actually are. And I felt like if kind of in between those things when I wrote that song, kind of, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. And how, and how do you feel now? I still feel like that. <laughs> Uh, you know, even even more maybe because I've been so busy with uh, telling people who I am over the last year, on all these interviews and all this being on stage, you know, being this personality that I've created while making the album. I've kind of lost uh, who I actually am at the moment, you know, because you're doing the same thing every day. You're doing the same act every day, and you know, even if if you want it or not, the thing that you you were doing on the thing that I was doing on stage, uh, just being myself becomes an act, you know, in a way, uh, not completely because it, that would be completely fake. But, but still, you know, you have to do things every day, uh, and some of the songs are so old that I didn't feel them just as much as I felt them and I wrote them. Uh, so, yeah, then you kind of lose grip on who who you are because you always have your story ready to the, to the journalists and everything. And how do you? Stay fresh then. Um, what do you mean with staying fresh? Well, you said now you feel like well, playing sometimes an, an act. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me rephrase. How do you stay connected to the to to, to myself? You, yeah, to yourself. Uh, well, that's very difficult. Um, ma uh, mainly, I think you just have to reflect on. You have to. You have to kind of recognize what you feel at the moment and listen to your emotions. Uh, you know, when I, I, I had this, um, this feeling when I was uh, playing on uh, the Lowlands Festival in Holland that I didn't feel in my, in my element and I didn't feel myself uh, while I was doing it because I was so nervous and everything and I wasn't like, I wasn't like enjoying what I was doing. I was singing my own songs to so many people and it's my favorite kind of music so why am I not enjoying it? And I kind of had this um, uh, this realization over there, and I was. Uh, that's when I started thinking about what should I change so I can enjoy it again. And I changed. Um, I added another band member who's doing because I was doing way too many things at the same time back then, playing a lot of instruments with MIDI keyboards connected to a computer, which is not even a real instrument. It's just a machine which I don't feel connected emotionally with at all. And uh, you know pressing foot switches and things all the time while I was singing the songs and the lyrics, trying to remember all the lyrics of these old songs. That's how I felt when I was singing for thousands of people. Um, so that's when I thought, I can't even focus on the song or what the song means or what I feel with the song because I have to remember all these things, doing all these things at the same time. So I added another band member, uh, Ben Ryder, who's doing uh, part of what I was doing. And I'm playing an electric piano now. Um, a Wurlitzer piano, uh, which helps a lot because it's a real instrument. And I'm playing the electric guitar here now, which helps as well. You know, both of those instruments I feel really connected to while I'm playing them, and I can just focus more on the lyrics and um, and what I feel at that moment instead of being nervous and trying to you know remember everything. So uh, that helps a lot. That's a way of you know. Well, the the thing that I because uh, that that happened because I reflected on how I felt and I. The only way of staying connected to uh, who I am uh, is just by reflecting on that as much as I can, which is very difficult when you're on tour, by the way. It's very, uh, if I'm at home, it's really easy because I, I can just listen to new music and get an opinion about it because I'm just on my own and just, you know, create something. But on tour, I'm always surrounded by my band and I have to do the same thing every day. And uh, it's a full time job. I wake up, I get in the car. We drive through the show, we're sound checking, playing, packing everything up, uh, I'm doing the merchandise at the same time. Uh, going back to the hotel and, you know, the next day is the same thing. So if you do that a whole year, you, you start losing 
a connection with who you, who you are and what you feel. But is in hindsight, was it good to use your own name? Um, because it makes question. it easier, right? It makes it easier when you have a stage, stage name. Yeah. And you can, you, then you actually know better who you are. But it also makes it harder, I think, yeah? in a way. Because if you, if you create a stage name, you also create a personality, which might not be you. I had okay. the same thing with the Skywalkers, the band that I was in uh, before I was doing my solo project. And uh, I felt like I was a personality in that band, which is very, like, a little bit childish, kind of. I, had, I even had like a voice that I was doing that felt really good with the music that we made, you know, because I sang differently. Uh, but that wasn't me at the time, completely. That was just a part of me. And if you create a band with another name, you're creating a part of you, I think, and not the whole you.